What works? Language, literacy and numeracy in training and assessment. It plays a big role in any job that you do. You need to be able to read and if you can't have these basic skills then you know, it makes life very difficult. It's about comprehending what they're reading and um, I learned a long time ago that, that reading isn't to do with vocabulary or um, just understanding the words and the sentences. It's to do with their framework of reference. It's to do with what they've grown up with so that they've got something to link what they're reading into. We will use reference material that they would come across in industry. So we would use a, a range of manuals and catalogues um, and we would expect them to be able to use and, and read those. So we've got bearing catalogues here that we get them to use and we get them to use them for a variety of reasons, one of which is to read a catalogue. The literacy and numeracy requirements of the job are fixed. You, they're, the, they're the level that you should be aiming for. You need to check, check your learning materials. Is the level too high? You might need to adjust the level of your learning materials downwards, the language level. And also you need to assess the literacy and numeracy levels of your learners when they first start your course because you might need to support them and develop their literacy and numeracy skills. When you bring a reading text into the classroom, say to the learners first of all, why are we reading this? Yeah, uh, Get them to think about the reason why they're reading the text, ask them to look for clues about what's in the text. They might look at the headings, they might look at subheadings, pictures, anything in italics. Then ask them to, um, to think about why they're reading. Are they reading for one main point, a small point? Do they need to skim the text and look for the different sections, the information they need? With a reading task, usually I don't show them anything, but I might talk about the topic and I say what sort of things come to mind if we're going to talk about spelling, for example, if we're doing a spelling activity. Then I'll show them the reading task after we've done some talking, some brainstorming, some words would be written up on the whiteboard. On the actual printed material, I definitely try not to have slabs of writing because that just turns somebody off and it looks too hard. I try to use things like pictures too that gets their attention, um, just headings that are bold and written in a larger font and a darker colour and dot points so that it, the reading is simple and basic. The terminology is too technical. I'll go through and just highlight those words and then I would change the terminology so that it's more simplistic and they can understand it. That way it has more meaning to them because if they, there's no meaning there, it just goes over the top and they don't understand what they're doing. It's a huge part in the courses that we do because obviously they've all got their learner's guides that they need to read, they've recipes to read, work plans to read. So we, we tend to do it as a group. So we, you know, we'll sit down and I will read a little bit and then I'll say, OK, so somebody else can have a go now. And as they're reading, we, we help to, you know, if they get stuck with a word, we, we try and assist them and how they can spell it out and really get that word across. And if there's a word that they don't understand, again, we'll come back to that and say, well, what do you think this word means? How can, what other word could we use in its place? I make sure that we do a session somewhere along the line on vocabulary and we'll pick those words out and work with them so that they're familiar with them. And I'll do a glossary activity with them where I have the words and I have the meanings but they're all jumbled up and I do that with cards or cutting and pasting sometimes and they have to match them. And if they don't know the meaning, well, I'll give them a glossary or a dictionary or the internet and they can find the meaning themselves. Sometimes the students go, why are there always so many words? And I go, well in English we have words pretty, beautiful, lovely, nice, you don't have a problem with that. Now this is your trade, you just have to learn what the different words are. <laughs>